new in Christ, we are washed clean of our sins. That I understand. But for that, so that sin might lose its power in our lives. Like, you know, I don't, I don't fully understand what that means because I feel like sin has a lot of power in my life right now. But I don't know. This is just what I took away from it. Um, why do you think the church hardly fasts anymore? Monkey, that's a great question. Um, because we don't have to. Um, Christ actually talks about fasting and how we don't have to. Um, but, you know, I think also too, people have tried to make religion more comfortable for people so that they want to come to Christ and fasting can be very uncomfortable, right? Like we're literally not eating and that can turn people away from Christ. So, um, and then also too, I was reading, I think it's first Corinthians where it talks about, it doesn't matter what food you eat or what you don't eat or all of that. Like, it doesn't matter if you're doing it to honor God, then you're doing it to honor God. So I don't know. I don't, I don't think it matters as much to fast. I think fasting Personally, I use it when I need a breakthrough, when I need an answer, but I don't know why churches don't really talk about it too much. My church does, but, um, you know, when I was growing up, I never heard of fasting. So, um, yeah, to answer your question, I think it's just to make people more comfortable in, like, religion. Uh, yeah, Mike, I'm not saying we shouldn't fast. I'm just saying that's why I think churches don't really talk about fasting because it's uncomfortable. Um, and Jesus did talk about, I think it's in um, the book of Matthew where somebody, the Pharisees ask him why his apostles aren't fasting. And he's like, because I'm here. Like they don't, you know, when I leave, when the bridesman leaves or whatever he says, then they can fast again. So, um, but yeah. Um, I don't remember the exact verses though. Yeah, Mike, I agree. All right, so let's jump to, where was I? Yeah, so verse 5, 6, 7, and 8 definitely need me, need some more context on that. Because I truly don't feel fully set free from some sin that I feel like has hold on my life. Um, and I'm sure a lot of people struggle with that, but I don't know. Okay, now jumping to verse 10. Um, no, let's jump to verse 12. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to sinful desires. Do not let any part of your body become an instrument of evil to serve sin. Instead, give yourselves completely to God for you were dead and now you have new life. So use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Sin is no longer your master for you no longer live under the requirements of the law. Instead, you live under the freedom of God's grace. I just love this because Paul always talks about how important it is to honor God with our bodies. We see him talking about in 1 Corinthians how our body is a temple of the Holy Spirit and we do not belong to ourselves and we must honor God with our bodies. So I, I really appreciate how Paul always says it that way because it's so easy to let your flesh lead, like to let to give into your sinful nature. But when you're truly honoring your body the way God wants you to, then you won't be doing that. At least that's how I feel and that's what I take away from this. Um, use your whole body as an instrument to do what is right for the glory of God. Like that is so incredibly powerful. This is why to me, like dressing more modestly is very important because I feel like I'm honoring God in that way. I know I'm wearing a tank top. Don't come for me. It's hot in this house. <laughs> but usually like I try to like wear like high neck shirts or like looser jeans. And like that's something that's very important to me because I feel like I'm honoring God with my body when I do that and not show, you know, the whole world, my curves. But um, yeah, so that's just something that I really love that Paul always talks about is truly honoring our bodies to honor God. And that goes for everything, sexual immorality, that goes for what we put into our bodies, that goes for how we take care of our bodies, like working out and physical fitness and that kind of stuff. So yeah, I just really love how Paul always touches on that. Okay, and then Paul says again, verse 15, well then, since God's grace has set us free from the law, does that mean we can go on sinning? Of course not. Do you realize that you become the slave of whatever you choose to obey? You can be a slave to sin, which leads to death, or you can choose to obey God, which leads to righteous living. Easier said than done. Of course, we all know that we, um, Sam, yeah, I would love to. Give me one second. Uh, crap, I totally forgot what I was going to say. Dang it. Um, 
yeah, easier said than done. Of course, it's really hard sometimes to deny our flesh to, you know, walk in perfectness because none of us are perfect. We all fall short of the glory of God. Bob, we are reading in the book of Romans chapter 6, verse 15. Um, but I just love how Paul like lays it out. Don't you realize that be- you become a slave of whatever you choose to obey? That's terrifying. Cause that's like, that could be your partner. That could be social media, like convincing you to buy things, or that could be corn when you're like, you know, constantly watching it and you become a slave to those things. So yeah, love it. And this is why I love Paul because he's so freaking blunt. Like he tells you what it is, how it is. He tells you what's right and wrong. Um, I was just talking to Jameson about this, actually. Like, I love that he is so just straightforward. Okay. Um, Yeah, and so that's all I wanted to read. We did chapter 5 and 6. I'll save 7 and 8 for next time um, because it's too much to go through the whole book. But, yeah, so I just wanted to share some verses with you guys. I was going to do, like, a true Bible study, but, you know, still, still in it a little bit from what we were talking about yesterday. And I don't feel like equipped to do that. So I just wanted to share some verses with you guys that I loved. Um, So yeah, (laughs) that's all. Um, Anyway, does anyone have any questions about the Bible or about what we talked about today? Oh yeah, somebody asked me my, a quick version of my testimony. Let me give you guys that really quick. So I was raised Baptist. I was raised to fear God more than to love God. So um, I didn't even know God loved me growing up. Like I was truly terrified of him. And it created a lot of bitterness and resentment in me and anger. Um, And so I left the church at a very young age, probably around the age of 17, maybe younger, like truly left the church um, and got really into the new age stuff, um, which led into really deep, dark witchcraft over time. Um, And uh, it was eventually the fear that I rejected as a kid, like the fear that pushed me away from God that eventually brought me back because I realized that I looked just like the world. I looked like all of these celebrities that were being so open about their enemy worship and literally like naming music albums demons and like all of them dressing up as demons and like even Taylor Swift doing full on witch seances on stage. Like it made me realize that I looked just like them and it was that fear of my childhood upbringing and my relationship with God as a kid that brought me back to Christ as an adult, but it was the love this time, understanding God's love, because I didn't have that as a kid, That, but that's what made me stay, and that's what solidified my faith this time around. Um, what do you consider sin? That's a great question. We just were talking about that, actually, in the book of Romans. It talks about how the law tells us what sin is. So, um, the law is doing, I mean, the sin is doing anything that God has said is wrong to do. So yeah, that's at least my take on it. If somebody has a better answer, drop it in the chat. Thanks, Paul. I'm very glad I found my way back as well. It's sad how they do, how they all do that. The celebrities, Tommy, I totally agree. It's gotten really bad. Like, you know, I grew up thinking like Taylor Swift was a Christian and she's just like full on demonic now. Like what happened to these people? It's so sad. How did Jesus want us to fast? Would like to start myself and how do you fast? Jay, this is a really good question. So um, I don't think Jesus ever speaks about like how to fast in terms of how long or how, you know, what can we can eat or drink during a fast or whatever. Um, what he does say to not do it in a way that other people that it draws attention to you so not to do it in a way that you're like you know I'm fasting I'm exhausted like do it in a way that truly glorifies God so that you're not drawing attention to yourself and being kind of like a hypocrite he does mention that um but other than that I don't think he gives us like an outline of how to fast I know in the book of Daniel there's the Daniel fast people talk about so you can read in the book of Daniel there he talks about fasting a little bit, but for me, what fasting is for me and my understanding of it, um, is that we fast, we can fast from anything. It doesn't have to be food. Like at the beginning of the new year, I fasted from social media and I, instead of clicking,